Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. This week we're taking a look at a cool new project that we got working on here, that we have here, that we got working on here. That's, I need to work on that. Anyway, this is a pretty cool project. It is an upgrade to a previous project. These are NeoPixel Ring headphones. So I actually have put NeoPixel Rings in my headphones to make this cool little animation effect. And this is actually a, um, a inspired project from one of Becky's projects. Uh, so a couple of years ago, she made the, uh, the the glowing skull candy headphones modification, where she took a pair of skull candy headphones and she made a NeoPixel ring out of Flora NeoPixels. She assembled them in a ring and she put them inside of these very cool headphones from Skull Candy. Um, so when she made this project, she actually, uh, we at Adafruit didn't manufacture, they didn't come out with the NeoPixel rings yet. So I figured uh, it would be a cool opportunity to remake this project with some 3D printed stuff and the NeoPixel ring. But also, instead of using a Flora or a Trinket or a Gemma, I thought it would be cool to use this new board. This is the Adafruit Feather BLE module, which basically has a microcontroller, a BLE module, and a LiPo charger all built into this one little square package, which is really powerful and it's pretty cool. So um, over the weekend, uh, or last weekend I think, over the, the Thanksgiving weekend, I put together this project and quite a few folks liked it. So I figured I'd do a layer by layer on how I put together the uh, the enclosure. So it is the 16X uh, NeoPixel rings uh, and they're um, put inside an enclosure, which is kind of cool because the enclosure doesn't have any screws. It doesn't need any glue. Everything snap fit friction together. So uh, that's pretty cool. It's also this piece here, the actual diffuser um, is actually dual extruded so it's a uh, dual extruded uh, using our Flash Creator Pro. So the inside here is actually transparent PLA, and then the rest of it is this black PLA. And the covers can be interchangeable, and they just snap on. Uh, and the cool thing about this is that you can access the uh, the USB port here on the on the featherboard, so that you can charge it. You can add new programs, and since it's Bluetooth low energy, um, you can change the animation effects using your mobile phone. So that's really cool. Um, so again, this using the 16 NeoPixel rings here. It's using uh, the BLE featherboard. It also has a 500 milliamp battery, so it's going to last a while. And it also has a switch, so you can turn it on. So the switch is on this side, or this side rather, where the battery is, and this is where the microcontroller is. <clears throat> so uh, I just wanted to show you guys how to. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to model the uh, the components so that you can create in part two. I'll show you how to create the enclosure itself. So let's take a look, a real quick look. I'm inside Fusion. Um, so I, I actually modeled the two components, uh, the NeoPixel ring here and the BLE featherboard, which is here. And you can see how, uh, when, I, when I hid the, the, the NeoPixel ring, you can see how it is uh, being mounted here. So there's this uh, sort of this little elevator thing. It's kind of like a standoff. This elevator thing, and there's this bottom here where there's like a channel. And the channel so that the wires can pass through and it, it just snaps into these uh, this little uh, cavity area. And there's a little slit here so that the wires can pass through the headphones like this, link right through over the headphone area, <laughs> over the head. And then there's a giant hole here for micro USB ports. I always have a big hole because a lot of the connectors for the micro, micro USB port have to be a little bit bigger. So I always accommodate for those. And the interesting part is that uh, there's no mounting screws. It's just like pegs. So you can see the pegs here. Let me hide the board now. And you'll see that there's no standoffs or just pegs because the board, the bottom of the board is so flat that I don't, I didn't need any, um, any actual standoffs. So just pegs to hold them into place. And then that's what makes the the uh, the thing really, really thin here. Um, I think it's. Uh, let's do a quick measurement because I'm not sure how thick it is. You can see they're not thick at all, right? It is 11.5 millimeters thick, so it's really, really thin. And then the other case is actually two different cases, right? One for the, the, the board, the ring, and then another one for the battery, the switch, which goes over here in this opening, and then um, the actual ring, which snaps into here. So we'll, we'll, we'll show you guys how to model those things. But in this one, like I said, I just want to focus on modeling the components because otherwise it'd be like an hour long tutorial. But it should be like a half hour long or so, so to make this. Um, I think I got everything there for the intro. Um, I'm actually using a new microphone, not a new microphone, but I'm using my H4N microphone here and I got uh, my screen set up here. This is like a, an LG 1920 uh, 27 inch like monitor, so it's a little bit better. Let me guys know if the audio, if you like the audio and if you like the, 
The thing I also got my my little LED panel here that we're gonna start carrying soon. It's the Lux uh, 22, the Lux Pad 22, which is a really nice LED panel. If you guys are doing video stuff, it, it helps out. And for the camera, I'm just using my Logitech C920. So, take a breath. Without that, let's go ahead and start a new document. I've actually already ran ahead and wrote down a bunch of measurements for the actual components, so like the ring and the featherboard. But I, I recommend um, measuring, not just referencing the, the tech drawings and stuff. Like you can find the tech drawings in the Adafruit uh, learning system for each one of these things under downloads, for example. You can see the tech drawings there. It's in inches, but you can convert it over. Um, I would recommend um, measuring your stuff because I actually just found out that the NeoPixel ring is actually um, different now. I have older ones, a little bit older versions, and they're actually thinner than the new ones. The new ones are actually, the, the PCB anyway, are like a little bit thicker. So I'm talking like um, like these new ones are 1.6 mil, and the older ones are literally 0.9 mil, so a lot thinner, 0.9 mil, not even one millimeter. So um, just some things to look out for, but... Let's let's actually start off with modeling this guy first. So, the way to start off, uh, I start off with a circle, obviously, and I like to start in the center here, in the center, like center, center. <laughs> so I'm just gonna click drag and pick whatever. Um, let's undo that. Let me actually input the actual number. Um, so it's gonna be 44.5 is the outer uh, diameter of the ring. And it's really important to like make your components first before you model enclosure because you know then you can then you're for sure that uh, your your stuff's gonna fit around it so there's the first circle and then the next inner circle was uh, 31.6 millimeters um, so even though the board thickness changed the the actual these these did not so that's good okay so I have those and I'm just gonna move these sketch dimensions around so that I can feel them better out Okay, so that's the first part. Uh, the next thing we were gonna do is make the um, the LEDs, right? So we're gonna make like the LEDs things. You don't have to make them, but it's here. It's just like a interesting um, way to do them. So um, they're five by five, so they're really easy. It's just a square that's five by five. So I'll start off by making that in the with the square thing. Uh, I keep forgetting that you can use R. To bring that up and then change it to the center if you want to do a center one. So I'll bring it down here. Then we'll be able to move it a little bit later. And it's gonna be E. Sorry about that. Five by five. So that looks right. Now it doesn't look like um, it's in the center there. So I can just move it around into the center. It's not locking or anything, but that's fine because um, again they don't have to be exact. I'm just I just wanted to show you guys how to do like a mirror with this thing. So um, so what I would do is um, go into sketch, go into circular pattern, and then just select those four edges here like that, and then select the center point of the, of the circle, right? So I'm going to pick this guy. And then by default, it's like three. So I'm going to change that to 16 because we have 16 NeoPixel rings. And then hit OK. That's it. There's our our like thing. So now to actually make it, we just do some extrudes. So um, this is where it's like, I click one and then I have to click like 16 times. Oh no. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you could use a marquee and stuff, but um, yeah, you should probably use a marquee instead of clicking 16 times like I am. <laughs> That's fine. So uh, in this tutorial, I'm putting point 0.9 because it's I'm doing it for my older ones. So remember, 1.6 is the new ones. So hit enter, and then my thing disappears. The sketch because it's just the default behavior. And then I will actually hit extrude again and make these guys. Um, I think it was 1.6. The thickness of these guys. Let me double check. The thickness is yeah 1.6. That's funny. 1.6 thick. The LEDs and then the board. The new ones are 1.6 as well. All right. So instead of yeah, I guess I could. I could just put like 0.9. Remember, you can do math. Well, 0.9 plus uh, 1.6, so that it's you know accommodating for the thickness of the thing. Cause it's supposed to start off on the top of the board. So I'll change the operation to join. Hit OK, and now I have my nil pixel ring. So there's my nil pixel ring. Yay. Okay, so that's modeled. You can hide that now or name it. Let's name it. Um, 
NeoPixel ring. And then the body as well, not the origins, the body. Neo pixel ring. Okay, so that's there. And now I can work on the next thing, which is gonna be the board itself, the BLE board. So the BLE board is gonna be this 28 by 51 by uh, whatever. I'll have to reference my old design to see how thick it is. But that's fine. So again, R for rectangle. Click on the axis that you want, and then we're gonna start with the the, the center circle, the center rectangle one, because I can click on the center and then drag it out, and it does that that center ish. That's cool. So twenty two point eight. Paste. Hit the uh, remember hit tab to uh, to lock that in there. And then fifty one point two. Paste that in there. Oh, no, I have it reversed. Oopsies. So this is going to be 51.2, then 22.8. Now I'll click or hit enter. And now I have my uh, my sketch dimensions there, so I can like move them around. And, like, like that. It's just like that, so I can access them like that. There you go. OK, so um, let me double check. Yeah, everything's right. 51.2, and then 22.8. OK, OK. So the next thing I need to do is to make the little mounting holes, right? That's what I like to work on first. So uh, I'll just hit uh, R, or no, C for rectangle, or for, <laughs> for circle. And then I'm just going to draw it anywhere around here, somewhere around this corner. So um, it's going to be 2.4. Uh, because it's a peg, it needs to be a little bit smaller than the 2.5 thing. Because the, the actual uh, mounting hole for the board is 2.5, but I'm making 2.4 so that it's a little bit smaller. Uh, so that because you know with the PLA it expands a little bit so uh, the next thing I'll do is uh, hit D on my keyboard for the dimensions and I'll say I want this center from this edge to be a, a certain spot so 2.4 and then I'll do the same for this part or no I did that part uh, D again D and then go from now <laughs> I'm already in D sorry so this part to this part will be 2.4 oh, sorry 2.4 oh, like that. Okay, so now I have the mounting hole with the sketch dimension all sorted out. So now I can do a mirror across all this. So I, again, I need to make uh, some of the, some center uh, some center reference points, some construction lines. So I'll hit L or just click on the the line tool, and then um, whenever you want to find the midpoint, you can just roll over an edge and then go like that. Oh, that there it is, and then go all the way down. Click that. Do this part here. You already know, I already know because it's like you know I know where the center is, but you need to use this as a reference because you need to be able to reference uh, that when you do a mirror because when you do a mirror. So I will uh, click Escape to get out of the line tool. Click on these guys, both of these, and then turn them both into a normal or a construction line. So the reference points. So now I can come into Mirror. Wish there was a hotkey for Mirror, and then click on this the object, and then click on the mirror line, and then click on that, and now I get my mirror and hit OK, and then I'll do the little right click and then hit repeat mirror, so I can click these two guys, click on the mirror line, and then click on this horizontal line, you can see it there as a preview, and then hit OK. So now I have my most of my board stuff. The next stuff I need to come up with is uh, the two components that are that that are kind of in, in, you have to consider when you're modeling it. So the two components are the micro USB port and the JST port. Because if you don't model those, then you're not going to know if things are going to uh, smash into it, intersect with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is the uh, the USB port, which is actually down here. Because it's, um, that's the orientation I want to choose. So I've already, I've already measured it out. Um, but I did this with calipers because they weren't uh, in the, the tech drawings. Let me check real quick if everything's recording still. 14 minutes, look at that. Okay, hopefully the audio's all good. Again, let me know in the comments if you like the audio and stuff because I'll, I'll use this microphone again. Uh, it just takes forever to set all this crap up, so that's why it's like, uh But anyway, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hit R for the rectangle and I'll change it to the center thing because I'm going to draw it from the center. And I will put in the measurements. So it's going to be 5.6. 
by it's actually already wrong so this part is 5.6 and then this is going to be 7.6 I think one of them that one no it's already backwards so 5.6 7.6 hit okay so there's my thing so it's actually flush with this line so we can use the uh, the collinear so if I click on the collinear I want that to be lined up with that and it just moves it up for me so that's great so there's our USB or micro USB port all lined up exactly where we want it in the center and on the edge there so the next thing I'll make is the um, this is actually the thickness we'll get to that later um, this part is I think on the that angle <laughs> So let's do, and then this is the distance. That's how I wrote it out. So let me let me draw it out here. Again, it it's going to be on the edge here too. So um, I'll grab this thing and change it to the center, and then I'll just draw it out here. Let's just draw it out over here. So it's what was the measurement? It's uh, eight by six point one. Um. I didn't copy it. 8 by 6.1, though. Yeah, it's supposed to be flipped again. I keep doing that, so that's fine. Always reference your stuff, man. Like, always have your calipers handy and, and doing all that. I'm just rushing through it because I already know the measurements, right? So that looks all good. I'll hit OK. Now, what I what I was able to get was in the tech drawing um, over here. I think there's a distance. Yeah, you see that? Oh, right here this is this is it right here this is the USB part and although it doesn't tell you the the width and height of the actual component it does tell you the distance from like an edge to the middle of the component so for example um, the USB port is uh, these are inches so 0 0.45 inches and then this is um, the the JST uh, the JST port so that is 0 0.42 inches from this edge to that edge. So if you convert it, zero point, what was it? Zero point four two inches. I could actually do that. So let's let's go ahead and do that. I, just to show you guys. Um, so I'm gonna do D to sketch it, and I want this to this, and it was zero point four two inches, and it tells you it's fifteen point six millimeters, right? I think it's in my notes. 15.6 millimeters. Why did colors come up? Let's get rid of that. It actually says 10.66 distance. So, oh, it is 10.66 distance. I don't know where I got that number from. So whatever. It says D20. That's funny. So now that I have that distance in there set, um, you know, it's it's following the the. It's following this, the tech drawings. So now I can do the collinear where I want this to be flush with the, the, the this edge. So I'll say this edge needs to go flush with that edge. And there we go. Now we're rocking. So those are the, na the main two components that I need to be wary of. Um, you could, of course, model the rest of it. But uh, for this particular project, we didn't need to. So I think let's stop that and we'll start extruding and stuff. So the board is 1.6 tall. So I'll just hit E on my keyboard, select the main portions here. We don't have to select those because we don't, you know, there's holes there. So it's a 1.6, 6, enter, and we got that going on. And then we'll bring back the sketch. And I'll actually rename it real quick, DLE, just first quick. And then I'll hit E on my keyboard and do the JST. And then I'll do 1.6 plus whatever the 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 thickness of the thing is of the JST port is, it's gonna be uh, 4.6. So 1.6 plus 4.6 is 5.6, but we'll just do it like that, doesn't matter. Of course, change the operation from cut to join. Okay, so we got that. And then the USB is next. So we'll do 1.6 plus, I believe 2.6. Okay, 2.6, those are easy. But whatever, use math. And then we'll change the operation again from uh, cut to join and then hit OK. And now we can do some fillets. I believe it is two millimeters. So hit F on my keyboard, 
click on the edges here and then we'll just hit um, two I think I think it's two yeah it looks about right okay so there you have it there's our there's our two components that we have modeled um, using a lot of the same uh, uh, steps or processes, features, operations, whatever you want to call them. Feather, really. So that's pretty much it in this tutorial. Just to show you, the main takeaway for me was like, here's how to create uh, a mirror. You know, here's how to use sketches. Um, and um, obviously, we can move this up a little bit because that's what we need to do anyway, right? When we're when we're modeling the case, we need to move this up a little bit, about that much, seven. And that's how they're going to be stacked on top of you. Everything here is still modifiable. I can edit everything. I just did everything in just a couple steps. And uh, sorry about the, the audio there. Um, everything's in the center, right? So everything's oriented around the center. So that's really important because when we create our case, we need to have everything oriented in the center. And this case is really like I tried my best to, uh, to make everything as thin as possible, like as small you can see there. There's just barely room for the board to fit into, but that works out really well because because that edge will will keep it in place along with those pegs. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make the enclosure, how to make the cover piece, and how to split it up for dual extrusion because it does need to be in separate pieces for dual extrusion. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let me go over, I don't know, anything else that I have in the project. Again, it's using the BLE board, which is pretty awesome because we'll be able to change the colors. Are they still on? They're probably still on because it's got a nice battery. Um, the 500 milliamp battery. So again, this is the Bleely board. Um, shout out to Becky for making this project. Um, the original project a couple years ago. The NeoPixel rings is the 16X type NeoPixel ring. So they're RGB, you can individually address them. There's a lot of sample code out there from, from the NeoPixel library. So you can do this cool little rainbow or the, the chaser effects and things. And of course you got the battery here, the 500 milliamp battery, which fits in the center here. Um, you can see that there, um, and it's all wired up like this. I'm actually going to make a, 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 a project that obviously in a tutorial out of this because um, that's what we do. <laughs> and of course, using the switch here to turn it. What is it over here? Over here to turn it off and on. Um, real quick about this project, um, I actually found it kind of useful. So like, if you're outside and you're dark, you're in your, you know, and you're in your like studio or whatever. It actually illuminates the stuff around you, so that's really cool. So you can use it like you know, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of useful, uh, other than just being really cool. And I'm and I'm really like surprised that a lot of manufacturers like Beats headphone like they don't put LEDs in their headphones yet. Like that's crazy. Like I don't know, it's not that expensive, but um, they're like hundred dollar headphones and the Beats ones anyway. These are actually uh, these headphones are from Co Allowed. I'll have a link below. They're actually like thirty dollar headphones, but I got them for ten bucks at like uh, at a discount uh, clothing store. Uh, you know, next to the all those iPhone cases, I saw this. I was like, these are really cool headphones. They are um, there are headphones that are incredibly minimalistic. Like that is like the main selling point about these uh, headphones. They're actually from Nokia and a Swedish company. They they like join together and like. Look how minimalistic this thing is, and it's really cool because it has the uh, the little um, micro. Plus, it has a microphone in it, so I can talk like if I'm on the phone, and uh, it has this button here for like switching, for like pausing and double click to advance. You know, you know the deal. But um, they're really simple headphones. Uh, the no another feature about this project is like I, all of this can come off. It's not like attached permanently to the headphones since I'm using blue tack. I don't know if you can see the the, the inside there, but um, they're just they're they they're hold down really well. It's not falling apart. <laughs> you could of course take it apart, but I didn't want to damage the, I didn't want to risk damaging the enclosure and the headphones themselves. So um, I figured I'd just put it on the outside, and it looks really awesome in my opinion. So that's pretty much it for this layer by layer. If you guys have any questions, of course, drop them in the comments, and I'll answer them uh, on the three D Hangout show that we have every week on Thursdays. Um, but uh, let me end it off with. Uh, like showing this off. <laughs> also, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Uh, I'll have the link below. That's where I share a lot of the, the work in progress stuff, behind the scenes things. So uh, if you want to build these headphones, uh, be sure to get on the, the stuff. We got a coupon code every Thursday and Wednesday. So check those out if you want to get some, some coupons on these LED rings and the other components. But there you have it, folks. Again, let me know if you like the audio uh, in the setup here. Um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep on cannon. Bye, guys.